last week's attack on the offices of French satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo in Paris. The group praised the attackers who killed 12 people, calling it an act of vengeance in response to the cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. It says the attack was ordered by Al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Zawahri. Arab Tov, I'm Stephen Bendenun. You are watching Israeli News Live. An Al-Qaeda leader has actually came out and stated uh, that they are responsible for the attack on the Charlie Hebdo uh, news uh, magazine organization there in Paris, France there. This is being reported on Al Jazeera. Uh, he actually released this video publicly on uh, the internet today making this claim here. Uh, the Al-Qaeda uh, in Yemen claims Charlie Hebdo attack uh, is, is in the uh, Al Jazeera reports as a top leader of Yemen's Al-Qaeda branch has claimed responsibility for last week's attack on Paris, uh, on the Paris magazine Charlie Hebdo when uh, two masked gunmen killed 12 people, including much of the weekly's editorial staff and two police officers. Nasser al-Ansi, a top commander of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, uh, or Aqab, in the branch is known, appeared in an 11-minute video posted online on Wednesday saying that the massacre at the Charlie Hebdo was a vengeance for the prophet. Um, the, the, another thing that was very interesting in the, of course, you see the video clip playing in the background. This is the actual uh, news from Al-Qaeda, uh, Al Jazeera, excuse me, Al Jazeera's news broadcast, the reporter there in Yemen, uh, stating that this was one of the top operatives uh, of Osama bin Laden, that he had been sent on a number of campaigns uh, throughout different places, including Afghanistan, also in the uh, um, in the Middle East, doing carrying out different attacks according to Osama bin Laden's request there. He also stated that there's been a number of drone strikes uh, by the West uh, that has killed many of the top uh, officials of the Al-Qaeda group, but the Al-Qaeda group is still very powerful, as he puts it, and still moving forward. Uh, they also stated in the article here, we, uh, excuse me, this was from, uh, from uh, Al-Ansi, Al Nasser Ansi says that um, we Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula claim responsibility for this operation as vengeance for the Messenger of Allah. Ansi said in the video entitled Messenger Regarded the Blessed Battle of Paris. Speaking over footage of the attack that killed 12 people, Ansi said today the Mahadeen avenge their reverend prof, revered prophet and send the clearest message to everyone who would dare to attack Islam's sanctities. As he referenced a warning by the late chief Al-Qaeda Osama bin Laden who was killed by U.S. commandos in May 2011. If the freedom of your speech is not restrained, then you should accept the freedom of our actions, he stated. Uh, in further news as well, uh, there was also an article that came out in the Russian news uh, agency TASS that claims that the, the operatives that uh, did the attack on Charlie Hebdo's uh, magazine place there were actually a Syrian, uh, op were trained in Syria uh, from the opposition, par uh, opposition fighters there that are funded by the West. Um, now keep this in mind when we bring this out here. What's interesting in this is that it is almost a war on words uh, dealing with all the tensions over Ukraine. Very, very obvious about this. Uh, Tass uh, says here, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei uh, Lavrov said Monday that Last Wednesday's attack on the French uh, satirical magazine was committed by militants who had fought in Syria for the West-backed, aimed, ousting Syria, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad from power. Cooperation with the West on the counterterrorism has been suspended. Meanwhile, terrorists do not suspend cooperation with each other. Terrorist activity knows no bounds. Lavrov said the two brothers who attacked the editorial office of the Paris magazine had mastered the art of terror in Syria, fighting with those who had been trying to oust Bashar al-Assad, an aim supported by Western counterparts, he added. 
Like I said there, it's, it's very much a war on words there, uh, one accusing the other as time moves on. And in, in, in another interesting twist there, Russia is also uh, just put into service one of their submarines into the Black Sea and has plans to build six more by 2016 that will be commissioned also to uh, defend the homeland in the Black Sea area there. Uh, and the world wars has not stopped even there. In Israel, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, battles against uh, the Turkish uh, Prime Minister. He says here, Prime Minister Netanyahu on Wednesday met with leaders of the pro-Israel lobbyist group APAC, American Israel Public Affairs Committee, and spoke about the renewed global awareness of the need to fight Islam's terror terrorism following last week's attacks in Paris. Now, keep in mind, this is also where uh, uh, Palestinian Authority leader there, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, attended and was invited. And of course, the French did not want uh, the prime minister coming. It's very odd. You know, you have a terrorist attack in France. And it's obvious, even though there were definitely uh, French people that were killed in this that were just as important as anyone else that would be killed by a terrorist. But nonetheless, it's very obvious that the terrorists were intentionally targeting the Jewish people as well, because uh, not only was the magazine uh, attacked uh, for speaking against their prophet Muhammad, but also so was the kosher deli also attacked as well. Uh, obviously attack against Jewish people as far as the intentions there. Of course, anybody working with the, with the Jewish news magazine there became the targets as well and sadly to say lost their own lives in this, uh, this event. But anyway, Abbas came, comes there who is a leader of a terrorist state uh, or not a state but a terrorist organization. He is, he's a part of it. His whole uh, background is a part of that. He has is, he is, uh, aligned his government with Hamas, a known terrorist organization that is also supported by, uh, of course, Turkey, uh, and which is kind of ironic because Russia is accusing uh, the United States for, uh, the, for, the, for the terrorists being trained through their network that comes in to do this. And in reality, even though Prime Minister Netanyahu defends the United States in this case here, it is the United States that also backs the Palestinians as well as uh, helping send aid into Hamas. It is nothing but a mess if you really want to look at the truth of it all. It is a mess in everywhere, every way you look. But on back with the article from Israel National News says, I think the war against terror will not succeed if it's founded on hypocrisy, stated Netanyahu. I have yet to hear any word, uh, world leader condemn the comments by Turkish President uh, Recep uh, Tayyip uh, Erod, excuse me, Ed, Edogan, not one, said Netanyahu. Netanyahu took part in a march with world leaders against terrorism in Paris on Sunday, where Turkish Prime Minister uh, Ahmet uh, Davutoglu was also present. At a news conference in Ankara on Monday with Palestinian Authority uh, Chairman Mahmoud Abbas, Erdogan said he could hardly understand how that how that Netanyahu dared to go to the march. He demanded Netanyahu give an account for the children, women you massacred, he states, quote unquote, accusing him of state terrorism. Uh, the statements are ironic given that Turkey is a main financial supporter of Hamas terrorism organization Abbas, who took part in the march is the head of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO terrorist organization as well, just as clearly what we had stated here. Uh, responding to Ordogan, Netanyahu stated, he said that Israel should not have been represented in the march in Paris, and the reason he gave was our action to defend our citizens against the thousands of rockets hurled at our cities by the terrorists of Hamas. I believe his shameful remarks must be repudiated by the international community because the war against terror will only succeed if it's guided by moral clarity, said Netanyahu. That means that the terrorists and their supporters must be condemned. And those fighting terror, as he states, like Israel and the United States, must be supported. It is as simple as that. 
Now, I would have to add to his remark there, the United States then in that case must also stop funding terrorists. It's Obama has been very hypocritical in his own actions in one side condemning terrorism and in the second side supporting a two-state uh, solution in Israel as well as helping fund uh, Hamas in what they would call a humanitarian effort. But we know all this finances went to uh, for concrete for building terrorist tunnels into Israel. So therefore, instead of backing Israel when they needed to fight the, uh, the terrorists in Gaza, Hamas, they ended up being supporters and, and accusing Israel of going too far when Israel's trying to deal with their own situation at home. Now, not to make things worse, but it gets a little worse as it is. Uh, Nasrallah, Hezbollah has huge weapons arsenal against Israel. Uh, this came out uh, today. Hezbollah has every type of weapon in its arsenal. This is coming straight out of Lebanon. Uh, the terror group's leader, Hassan uh, Nasrallah, said Tuesday, the resistance in Lebanon has everything the enemy can imagine and not imagine, he states, quote unquote. He said in a late night interview to Lebanon's al Mayadin. According to the estimations, Hezbollah already has rocket arsenal 10 times as powerful as that of Hamas. The IDF has assessed that like Hamas, Hezbollah likely is digging terror tunnels into Israel so as to attack. But the defense minister, Moshe Yolan, said Tuesday, there is no evidence of such tunnels at the moment. Now, it's kind of concerning for me that Yolan is making such statements in light of the fact also that he has cut the number of border guards that are up on the northern border, knowing that this is a very volatile area nonetheless. In fact, there has been reported a 60% insurgent of weapons for private uh, Israeli civilians that have been buying weapons in order to protect themselves, knowing that the government is just pulling their hand back. It's much like what's going on in Jerusalem. Very same thing there. The police are told to stand down while the Arab attackers come in and just mutilate civilians as if it's nothing. It's only the last minute or the last second before any intervention is actually done. Is this the same type of action that will be taken on Israel's northern border against Lebanon? What is the purpose for this? And why isn't Israel standing up to the enemies that are around her? It's quite obvious, seeing as the whole world is coming against Israel, that only God himself will make that stand for Israel. And this is that very hour that God will have to stand for her as the world comes against her. I'm Stephen ben Danun with Israeli News Live. If the news that you have been seeing is a blessing to you and you would like to be a part in supporting this particular news type broadcast that is free of charge across the world, it is made available, then you can go to our website, israelinewslive.org, and you can contribute there on a link that is provided. We thank you, and the God of Israel bless you.